while the shape and size and orientation of an object might determine the direction in which energy is scattered that arrives at a target, the dielectric constant is the property that we refer to, to that determines how much energy is scattered. The dielectric constant, or the relative permittivity, is essentially a measure of how well the waves, the electromagnetic waves, will interact with the material. A high dielectric constant will mean that it interacts quite strongly, and a low value will mean that it doesn't interact very much at all. So in a vacuum or in, through air, the relative permittivity of the dielectric constant is about one. And that means that the microwaves won't interact with that material almost at all. Dry soil, soil material, so soil which is made up of a combination of different materials, organic matter and sand and silt, is that you're talking a few numbers, maybe around about two or three, would be typical for the dielectric constant for dry soil. As soon as you add liquid water, you increase that dramatically. The dielectric constant of water is up in the 30s. It also is influenced by whether or not it's salty or what other minerals might be within that salt. One of the key drivers in terms of the dielectric constant for almost all the natural materials on the Earth's surface is how much liquid water there is contained within it. Because liquid water has such a high dielectric constant, as soon as you add more and more liquid water to say soils or leaves or plants, it increases the dielectric constant dramatically. One of the key things to realize about the influence of water content on the dielectric constant is that it's about liquid water content. When the water is frozen, it actually has a much lower dielectric constant. As a consequence, you can actually tell the difference between wet soil and dry soil, but frozen soil actually looks very much like dry soil. It's one of the key things that you have to recognize is that the liquid water content is going to be the largest driver of variations in dielectric constant of the natural materials on the Earth's surface. The dielectric constant will also determine how far a microwave signal penetrates through the material. Something that is very, very dry, so hyper-arid sand in some of the key deserts of the world, microwaves will actually be transmitted many meters through the, through the sand layer. The dielectric constant is also dependent on the frequency or the wavelength that you're using. So for different frequency bands, the dielectric constant might be quite different. The penetration through a material or the penetration depth is very dependent on the wavelength. Longer wavelengths typically can penetrate deeper through any material. Materials that are very conductive have effectively very high dielectric constants. It means that metal objects will be particularly good at scattering microwaves. Although we call it a dielectric constant, the key thing is that the dielectric constant actually changes with various parameters, such as the wavelength that we're using. So the wavelength or frequency actually has an impact on what we're measuring on the material, and the material can have a different dielectric constant for different frequencies.